A related idea is to, to uh, model qualities rather than fitting a curve to take some real data where, where you have data take the observed data and only use your um, statistical model to make predictions later on and there's a bit of a debate going on should we do this you know, when we have enough real data should we not just use the real data and then only extrapolate when we have to Yeah, we. Um, yeah, I don't think we want to go into Kaplan Meier actually. Uh, does Kaplan Meier ring any bells for you guys? Uh, if you're from a clinical background, you've probably come across them. Well, if you're more epidemiological or public health, you probably haven't. <laughs> well, I think the detail of it actually, when I think about that, is probably less important. So. I think I leave that as another formula. We shouldn't have formula after lunch. Um, it's been around 60 years now. This is the original article in the Journal of the American Statistical Association. Um, what's really quite interesting if you read the original article is in those days, it makes it sound like horse-drawn carriages and things. But in those days, they're much ch chattier, more conversational in the way they write a paper. These days, we're all a bit science-driven. Um, but uh, yeah, anyway, we don't need, I don't think we need that one. The key point is, while Kaplan-Meier takes censoring into account this problem that we haven't observed, everyone die, and so we don't know where the survivors died. Um, the key point about Kaplan-Meier data is it can't really help us in an economic evaluation because for an economic evaluation, we need to know how long people live and in what health state they live because that's going to drive the costs and it's going to drive the qualities. And so for that reason, that's why in... Uh, economic evaluation, we are always using a parametric survival functions, the y ball, the exponential, the log logistic, etc. I do need to say a little bit about this one though. Um, it's, it's a Cox proportional hazard model. Now this is routinely used in um, clinical trials or the reporting of clinical trials. And it's partly used because it's, hmm, it's sort of nice and simple. The hazard um, function is given here. Now, there's essentially two parts to it. H naught of T is the baseline hazard function. Now, that's the hazard that that is experienced if all the covariates in the model are zero. In other words, if we ignore the age of the patient, if we ignore their gender, other variables such as these, what hazard um, is common, as it were, to all the participants? And then the second part is where we have um, particular covariates, it might be patient age, gender, etc. And this allows a specific hazard to be calculated for different groups. So different groups have a particular hazard in common, the H naught of T, and then a different hazard depending on things like their age or gender. Now, this is a very popular model because it makes no assumption about um, the, the shape of the hazard function. It simply says, whatever the shape is, it's the same shape for everybody. So 
So no assumption has been made about how the hazard's changing over time. Um, this is hazards changing over time. We've got a wide range of different possibilities. The Cox proportional hazards model doesn't make any assumption about that. All it assumes is whatever shape it has, it's the same shape for everybody. It's the same shape for the under 60s as the over 60s. It's the same shape for men as for women. Now, that's quite a strong assumption. And also, when we're comparing two treatments, it's assuming that the patients who get one particular drug, their hazard function will have the same shape as the patients who get another drug. Now, that is a very strong assumption because different drugs often have a different mechanism of action. And if they've got a different mechanism of action, a different way of working, it's highly likely the hazard function will have a different shape for one treatment rather than another treatment. But despite that, um, people in reporting clinical trials do um, use the Cox proportional hazards model frequently. So it's important that the proportional hazards assumption is, is tested. And frequently it's not tested. Um, it's not too difficult to test. But it does involve more equations. Um, the logarithm of the logarithm of the survival function is plotted against the logarithm of time. So log log of survival function against the logarithm of time. And if the proportional hazards is met, the curves for different groups um, should be parallel. And so, if you could almost ignore the blue line, just think of the green line, that's one group, and the red line, another group, that's sort of broadly parallel. But if we look at the blue line, quite clearly the blue line is not parallel to the red line. It, uh, they converge, indeed, more than that, they cross over. So this would be an example, proportional hazards is not fulfilled. Now the importance of this is, it would then be completely wrong to use a Cox proportional hazards model. It'd be wrong to make the assumption that the hazard that faces one group over time is identical to the hazard that faces another group over time. So far better to estimate separate functions rather than the Cox proportional function. Uh, there's another very simple mathematical way. This can be quite hard to interpret. Is that parallel? Is it not parallel? It's quite tricky to say. I mean, in the blue and red case, it's easy because they cross. But in the green, green and blue, green and red, it's quite hard just to say, are they parallel? You know, they're not totally dissimilar. So another way of doing it is you estimate the logarith logarithm of the relative hazard as a function of these two things. Now, this is the covariate interacted with time. And this coefficient should be equal to zero because the assumption is the hazard ratio is not changing over time. They've got, as time moves forward, the hazards are moving together. Um, and so uh, there's no effect of the hazard ratio or time on the hazard ratio. And so this should be equal to zero. Yeah.